Greetings Summoner and Summonettes, welcome back to the Mobifier Challenger series. We are into picks and bans. Let's get this show started between Aware Gaming and Denial Sports. And I am joined by the fabulous Lunette the Herald. I am Studio. Any final words for the viewers at home, Lunette? Uh, no, just that I think afterwards you, you and I need to have a talk and you're going to get kicked in the shin. Why you got to say it like that, man? Come on, come on. I, I always, I, the T's blend together for me. All right, all right. <laughs> You give him the proper pronunciation because I just see words and it just becomes a jumble. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to MCS. This is Lunette the Herald and joining me here today is going to be Studio. We're going to be bringing you this next match here momentarily as we are now into picks and bans. Rise and Twisted Fate immediately taken off the board. And Rise, we saw that machine gun in action yesterday and Twisted Fate, it's actually one of Ehamda's most played uh, characters. Uh, Denial of Esports, formerly... Uh, one trick ponies try to qualify for the, for the LCS about two months ago, and of course, Aware Gaming, formerly the Salad Bar, one of my favorite teams actually, uh, also try to qualify for the LCS. Both teams unfortunately were unable 
to, I don't think they made it past the first round, and, you know, they're here, they're trying to get better, trying to get ready for that next split. A side note, um, Aware Gaming, one of my favorite teams, because they are the normal game team. They are the team that primarily practice and played, uh, now they do scrims, of course, but they started off being the one team that mostly played normals. That's actually not something I ever knew, but hey, you learn something new every day. So Rise and Twisted Fate taken off the board, as we discussed just a moment ago. Elise and Nunu following up close behind. I gotta admit, I, I hate the jungle Nunu. The new jungle Nunu is like the bane of my existence. Number one pan, uh, ban whenever I get into queue. I'm actually a hill -okay never seeing a Nunu in-game, because one of two things happens. If the Nunu has had a chance to actually play Nunu, because very few Nunus that get into a game playing Nunu, have played the character more than like five times in the past uh, few weeks because he's always banned. But the ones that are amazing will just win the game on their own. They'll just be eating jungle buffs left and right, just grabbing them out of everybody's hands. They'll be like level 40, everybody else will be like level 5 at that point in the game, and they'll just win. And the other option is they don't know what they're doing and they lose in like five minutes. And it's funny, it's really funny, but I don't like seeing either of those situations come out. I do like seeing a Thresh pick come out right away though, because that is an aggressive champion. Definitely a high tier support pick. Doesn't really show anything for Aware Gaming, except that they want to get kills with Thresh. Exactly. Very high up on that pick or ban tier right now, so no real surprise seeing him picked up after the bans we've seen come out. Karthus Nidalee followed up last but not least. Of course, that long-range devastating poke coming out from Nidalee, and nobody wants to deal with the global ultimates this round. Really only uh, Shen being left open on the board, but I don't really see him being picked up anytime soon. I say this on stream knowing that in about the next 10 seconds I will most likely have to eat my own words. Nami being picked up as a response to Thresh. Nami, um, she got a lot of buffs a while ago. It was, you know, small stuff, but small stuff that cleaned her up. Her kit's always been really good. You know, AoE, stun, good. Uh, moving boost to allies, awesome. Just everything's been powerful on her. It's just been hard to utilize. And it's cool to see her, you know, it's it's been like this for a while, but it's cool to see that transition from essentially the garbage tier never picked support except once in a blue moon and usually for a loss to the, uh, you know, now a high tier uh, support pick without, you know, major remake changes. She got buffed, she certainly got buffed, but it's mostly playability, a little bit more utility, and it's, it's nice to see that in action. Yeah, well, one of the things that you have to keep in mind is that supports have this very almost predictable rotating meta about them. Um, generally, what tends to happen is you'll have a champion that gets nerfed, and then somebody who hasn't been touched very for a very long time will essentially be the new big thing. You know, we saw uh, Sona, of course, she got nerfed, dropped off. Tarek became really popular, then he got nerfed. Lulu became more popular because of this, and she got nerfed. And from that, you know, we saw champions like Nami begin to be get picked up more. Sona went through some recent buffs and things like that. So I'm not really surprised to see Nami where she is now. I am, however, really excited because she's one of my favorite characters in the entire game. I remember when she first came out, I went absolutely nuts. I had like this huge presentation and all of these little scoreboards and charts demonstrating why she was going to be the best support ever in League of Legends. And then, oh, those first, after those first few weeks, it was so disappointing. Then everybody figured out what she actually does. <laughs> exactly. I, and I, I'm, I'm liking the picks now. So we've got Thresh Graves. That is not a common lane anymore, but it is a very dominating lane. It's, it's Snowball. It's pretty all-in because Graves does have that 525 auto attack range. A little bit shorter than most AD carries that uh, are base 550. So he can be punished and he can be beaten up in lane pretty easily. And that's a good response from Denial, Tristana. However, if Graves does get ahead, Graves Thresh is a lane where it's not that Thresh has to land a death sentence. If Thresh does really anything, uh, lands any sort of damage, even just a flail and auto attack, there's a good chance Graves can finish someone off if they just get a tiny bit ahead. That is an excellent point, but the blue team overall, they seem to be going for a fairly tanky composition. Thresh, you know, with his passive going on, he's got a lot of natural bulk to him. Renekton, obviously, that top lane bruiser. Graves has got his passive working for him. You've got Nasus in there as well. And can I just take a moment to say, oh my goodness, the AoE damage that's going to be coming out from both Renekton and Nasus' ultimates is going to be an absolute just terror to see in fights. The brothers in arms and just one of the best combos. That used to actually be just an instant win, I'd say, a couple months ago. It's been a little bit more balanced now, and of course, skill differentials can make up for that. But yeah, at this point, if Nasus and Renekton walk next to someone, they'll probably die just from the smell. I, I think that's what kills people. I'm not positive. But 
there's an Irelia. There's an Irelia meant to counterpick a Renekton. And I, I love to see this matchup. Uh, do you remember like a year or so ago, I think Wicked, um, back it was CLG, you stated, what counters Irelia? Oh, Renekton. And then what did he do the next day? Um, he picked Irelia versus Renekton, and then he played Renekton versus Irelia. <laughs> and then like he won both matchups, and it didn't make any sense. And it's, been a, it's always been a very skill-based matchup, a very difficult matchup for both sides. Renekton... <laughs> He's got better cooldowns. I really has better sustained DPS. If Renekton, you know, gets in, gets out, he wins. If he doesn't, you know, hit and style will just destroy him. So I want to see how that plays out if we don't get the 1v2. Exactly. Now for the purple team, um, it, they're hovering over the last pick right now. I'm really interested to see what they're going to end up going just because the blue team right now, they have got such a huge AOE comp going on for them. Uh, not all of the champions that they have either, you'd necessarily think is stable picks of AOE comps. Orianna aside, you know, uh, you've got a lot of tanky junglers that you tend to think of for AOE compositions before Nasus, Zach, Jarvan, uh, you know, even Malphite up in the top lane above these. But with the lockdown coming down from Box, the AOE damage coming out from Renekton and Nasus, as well as the Or Oriana ultimate. These team fights are going to be devastating if the purple team doesn't have some really good disengage between the Zyra and the Nami ults. It's a very, very nice combination of both sustained AoE DPS and the burst DPS coming out from Graves and Oriana. Something that a lot of the AoE teams from the past have been lacking this just today. They've been either, you know, we've got really good burst, we've got really good sustained. You, you need a mix of both, and with the mix of both, you know, what's going to happen is it's not hard for Orion to get an ultimate off. It may not be a good ultimate, but she can usually get one off, you know, on one person. And Graves, it's his is really easy to get off. So if they can get even just basic <laughs> grouping, then it's, it's the Renekton and Nasus show. As long as they're not completely denied early, they'll do their DPS. At the same time, it's a very good team comp to stomp it over on Denial Esports. They can, well, deny it. It's the Tristana ultimate, the Lee Sin kick. They've got two disengage they can knock out both Renekton and Nasus. Nasus doesn't have a good way to get back in, Renekton's got the slice and dice. But if a fight ever goes long term, it's just going to be Tristana's show. Tristana in the back, Rocket, 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 I'm assuming he's using Rocket or Tristana because it is the best skin. And then it's, it's, it's a free win at that point if, you know, Flappy, Flappy Bearfish can get farm and do well. Exactly. So we'll essentially just kind of have to see what happens here. This is another game where we're really seeing both teams play for the team fight phase. I love what Denial has done in response to this AoE comp coming out. I love the disengage that they've built around it, being conscious of both that laning phase as well as the team fight phase, which is not something we saw last match uh, when when we saw everybody going up against F FXO. That was just not something that was kept in mind. So I think this is going to be a much closer game. We've got a uh, team fight that are really kind of countered against each other as well as all the lane matchups have been kept in mind as well now the question is going to be how do lanes go because floppy bearfish has to get to that point first you know eventually i don't think he'll ever die i think it's going to be hard for him to die in a fight if he does get hooked or does get hit by an oriana ultimate he should go down but i think for the most part if he's going to die it's going to be long term but he still needs inox to survive he still needs nummy pooh bear playing zyra now, this is going to be a fun matchup. I don't know how Oriana Zyra goes. I haven't seen that matchup in, I want to say, about 10 months or so. Like, when was Zyra released? Like, a month after oh, that man. is the last time yeah. I saw that matchup. And it's going to be it's gonna be a weird gameplay. And it, I think a lot of this will come down to laning. Both teams need really powerful front lines. Without that, I don't think that... Um, without a powerful front line, it doesn't let Fluffy Bearfish do his thing. It doesn't let um, Hiroshin and Ghost Zero. Just chill in the enemy team and DPS them down with their ults. Absolutely. Now, I believe, uh, don't we have some commercials before we get into the game here, Studio? We do, we do. We'll be back in about a minute or so. I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsors, Mobile Fire, of course. And then let's not forget I Buy Power, Fatality, and Razor for sponsoring this wonderful, wonderful tournament. Let's go ahead. We'll be back in a minute or so. See you then, folks.
into the loading screen we go. Hopefully we'll get some good skins. I want to see some good skins. I want to see some good action. Um, currently waiting for that to pop back up for me. Now, Zyra on the mid lane, being played by Nubby Pooper. That's actually one of his staple champions. Very commonly gets banned out. And I, I want to see what he brings to the table because it's been a while since I've seen it, but usually it, it becomes a case where Zyra does so much damage uh, in those early uh, engagements that as long as she gets, you know, 30, 40 AP, that's almost enough to uh, burst someone down or just force them out of lane for a short while. Yeah, Oriana and Zyra are, uh, they're kind of in a similar similar kind of CS style when they're sitting in lane, because both of them you're going to see very far away. They're going to be allowing, you know, the orb coming out from Oriana as well as the plants coming out from Zyra to help CS and essentially keep them safe from any early game ganks. I don't see a lot of action necessarily going on there in the early game from the junglers. I see that more going on down in mid and top lane, especially down in this bot lane where you've got Nami's sons, which are going to be absolutely game-changing if they get into any fights. The question can, is, can Glebe Glarbu on that Nami actually land those bubbles? I mean, the difference between a great Nami and an average Nami is that the average Nami will land the easier ones to set up, you know. You see them stunned, they're slowed, they don't have flash, stuff like that. The great Namis are the ones that can really, you know, force those hard-to-land uh, bubbles. And, like, l landing a Nami bubble, I'd say the big factor about it isn't just that it's hard to land, it's that it's also slow. Like, it's hard to land, it's small AoE, and it's just so predictable. Yeah, the projectile speed coming off of Aqua Prison, it's just, it's one of the most frustrating things about Nami. After she was released, Riot sort of realized this, they actually increased the projectile speed on it at one point. Um, and don't get me wrong, that's part of why she's becoming more popular, because she doesn't necessarily have the same kind of mechanics uh, in that sense that she did when she was first released that were just so slow and tedious. But... I'm just really excited to see what's going to happen because, again, she's one of my absolute favorite champions of all time just because she is so powerful and so game-changing as long as you're not in Wood 5 like myself. I'm, I'm loving this invasion <laughs> because, it, you know, most people are like, let's be secretive about it. You know, they're both just, you know, tossing skill shots at each other. Oriana got auto attacks in both sides. of Both teams were just whatever. Like, we both know exactly what you want to do. And Glee Blarbu, uh coming out relatively ahead in this, he does pick off the the pink ward at the lizard camp, but there is still a, a, a ward by the wraiths, and looks like Denial is looking for an invasion here. All of them camped up. It could be they're waiting for the counter invade. It could be they're looking to do something here. Yeah, right now we're just going to all see them kind of dance around. Obviously, we've got all those nice little animations going on. But there we go. The minions have spawned, and it looks like Denial is going to go ahead and set up for the potential invade here. Lee Sin, of course, wanting to get in on that enemy red. Uh, what's going to make this invade rougher is that's a lane swap going on uh, for Aware Gaming. So it's a 3v4, and this is not going to be good for them. Now, Oriana's managed to catch vision of what's going on here, and now with that ward down over at red, it looks like it looks like they're just going to go ahead and back off and let Denial take this. It's a smart option to do. It's a 3v4. You know, if, if they maybe had a 4v4, they could do it at the same time. It's a risky It's a risky fight. They need Thresh. They need CC. They need a lot more than they currently have. Oriana, not exactly the best level 1 fighter. You know, ultimate pretty useful. Yeah, and unfortunately, Denial just having a lot of that initial uh, CC, especially between the Nami and Zyra combo. So no, a really good a really good choice on their part to go ahead and back off from that. Now the question becomes is how is this lane swap going to go? And oh my goodness, Nasus is all up in the enemy red right now. Looking for it, looking for that red buff. Does he have a smite? Uh, he does have smite. He snags it up. It's invade for invade. They do know Ghost Hero is here, but no one in the areas. There is a gank going on mid lane. E-Hamda. Able to go ahead and walk on out of that. I'm sorry, Scuba Chris, you're not going to be diving today. Oh, maybe he will be. No. It doesn't look like anything's no. going to come from that. You know, <laughs> like I said, like I said uh, earlier, both Zyra and Oriana, they're fairly safe when it comes to this particular lane. Now, I'm I'm just so curious about this lane swap because these are becoming just more and more popular as the season goes on. And I'm always, I always cringe whenever I see a team initiate these because my first instinct is that it's never going to go the way they plan and they're going to end up giving up so much map control for it. But Renekton actually is not going to do too bad in this 2v1 situation right now. My only concern is that Tristana, because of the fact that she has that steroid, she's going to be able to burst that tower down faster. She does have that steroid. doesn't have any points uh, in it yet, though. And that, that's something Tristana usually waits to level 4, maybe level 3 sometimes. 
It's just, it's not efficient early on. Her, her base damage is pretty crazy on explosive shot and rocket jump. So you gotta get those, those points in there early. But um, I, I think it's it's gonna be okay. They're trying to zone out Aurelia, trying to keep her pressure. Renekton is not safe in that. It's not a safe match. They want to just to you know go into this with confidence. Uber Chris is up here with double buff though. Uh, Fakes and RxD slash not gonna be able to do much here. Actually, Fakes does get stunned. Yeah, we got the stun going down. Lee Sin at connecting with that kick. We've got the flash coming out. The ignite ticking down, but it is not gonna be enough to go ahead and take out Grayson. No, there we go. The first blood as that kick connects, and it looks like Scuba Chris is gonna go ahead and secure that for his team. I I'm not 100% positive about this. I want to say Fakes in the sub for Aware Gaming. I believe um, he's not part of their normal roster, but they might have picked him up recently, so it's unfortunate. Um, I haven't seen him playing with him in the past. He just got a little bit too far forward, and you know he got punished for it. He walked into range of the Aurelia stun, and she still had her dash up. She still had a way to fight him, and it's well, what happened. He goes down. It's actually <laughs> Graves trying to land a distance onto Inox. Does get a little bit of damage onto her. It doesn't really get the kill though, unfortunately. Ihamba though. Yeah. No, oh my God! In the mid lane, that flash coming out from Syra, followed but up by the ignite. It is not going to be enough to take out Oriana. That was that was insane. God bless Orion's command for tech, keeping her alive just enough. That's actually something nice about her. Uh, she's very hard to kill with an ignite because it does have a low cooldown on the command protect, and you know, just toss it on yourself. Um, overall, though, this that's a pretty huge kill up top lane because now Graves, someone who really doesn't want to fall behind, like they, they need the tanky front line. They actually don't want to fall behind at all on uh, aware gaming. If their team falls behind, they're lower range compared to Tristana, and even Zyra is going to be a huge issue. But now Graves losing a kill, he's only level 4, compared to Flappy Bearfish is level 4, but there's a bigger wave coming out and he has more lane control. It's going to be a problem, it's going to be a problem very very soon, if they do go for early Dragon Contestant. Oh, that Dragon's going to be huge. Yeah, in the meantime, it does look like you're uh, you're getting some more comments from Bird about your scoreboard, but this Dragon is going to just provide uh, denial so much at this point. It doesn't look like there's going to be anybody even trying to come up to contest this right now. They're going to be able to go ahead and take it and immediately extend to nearly a 2,000 gold lead at only five minutes into the game. That's, that, that is a rough start, especially with a team that scales so well into the late game. Tristana and Zyra both incredibly high damage dealing champions. Fakes in the top lane, he doesn't have the support of RC Slash, it has shown up right at that moment, and they're able to fight off Inox, but this is a 1v2 lane. Fakes is getting pressured by the solo Inox, the solo Irelia, who is not a great 1v2 champion until she hits level 6. So when those transits show up relatively soon, she's about halfway there, you know, she's going to get a lot of farm in this lane. I compare it, it's 25 CS right now, 25 bot lane, except Irelia just gets better at CS, and we're not going to get better at killing. But I don't know if they're in a position to kill right now. An excellent point, but I mean, taking a look at these towers, no one's really lost anything yet. All the towers, they're fairly healthy right now. Um, so no one's really gaining essentially what you try and get with that early tower, that early map control. But meanwhile, in the mid lane, we've got an engagement going down here. E Honda doing her his best to get out of here. Lee Sin just gonna go ahead and jump away as the Zyra ultimate, as well as the Orianna ultimate come out. And oh, E Honda just overstaying his welcome just a little too much, and he is gonna go down as Scuba Chris picks up that next kill. <laughs> The little known fact about Zara is just how well she scales. I, it, it's a huge amount of damage she outputted there. The Zara combo normally on a support, it's, it hurts, but it, the plants do a little bit of DPS. I think too scary, but that was just insane burst coming out of Nubby Pooh Bear right there. And it's just going to get higher. This is one of the worst starts they could have possibly hoped for on Aware Gaming. The mid laner dies, the Orianna AoE its relative safe factor is kind of gone now. Fluffy Bearfish is in some danger, but he does have the rocket jump he should be safe. Yeah, he's gonna go for the rocket jump here and the double stun coming out from Nami actually really nicely landed there on the part of oh my god that name just leave Glarbu. Yeah, I just no I can't do it can't do it. I'm well, sorry Leave Glarbu <laughs> proving that double bubble ain't just a gum and it's it's just not looking like I don't like calling really? games at the eight-minute mark, but this is scary to see because their team comp is really really dependent on a few things which is Graves has to have enough burst to be relevant um, Oriana needs to be able to do enough burst to make the, the front line do damage, and the front line has to be relatively well farmed. Renekton's doing okay, could be keeping up with Aurelia. Nasus is keeping up with Lee Sin, but they're getting kills on the other side of the map. Lee Sin has two kills. Lee Sin's gonna be able to, you know, be tanky, be annoying, and just kind of slow them and stop the, the, the brothers from going in and just tanking damage while dealing with their ults. And that's what I'm worried about, that right now they're, they're slow losing control of the game just because uh, Lee Sin, with his tankiness and spamming is slow, 
will just stop here and stop go through outright. Oh no, and I've got a feeling we're about to see a fight break out over this blue buff. Scuba Crest coming in. He's going to go ahead and take that and actually leave one of the small minions down. And you can see Hana coming up over here with Nasus as well as the rest of Aware Gaming trying to come in here. Scuba Crest getting caught out. That pullback is going to come out. And oh, he's going to get taken down thanks to Spirit Fire and Buckshot combination coming out from Aware Gaming. And they will manage to finally pick off that Lee Sin. That's a, that's a huge kill. I think actually Denial could have fought that. If you look at them, Ghost Heroes at about half HP, Fakes in about the three fourths, RC slashed about half. The Transcendent plays on it really has shredded them apart, but you know, Scuba Chris, he got a little cocky there. He won in about one third HP when he finally finished that blue buff. Try to go for one of the more manlier seals, which is is it's it's a good play to make when you have the map control. Except they didn't have as much map control as they thought they did. As you know, the enemy team able to just walk to him and kill him. That's unfortunate to see, but at the same time, that's you know a little bit of reprisal. This gives Aware Gaming a chance to kind of come back into it. Tristana, though, just chilling in the bot lane. Bloody Bearfish, 75 CS, the most in the game. Uh, preceded by uh, only a 4 CS differential from W. Pooh Bear. The, the big scary farmers are getting big scary farm. Exactly, and it looks like we've actually got an engagement going down in the bot lane. Flappy Bearfish coming in here, getting some nice damage down onto Nasus as that rocket jump goes out, as well as that stun from Nami. An excellent job, and Flappy will go ahead and pick up that first kill down here, but it doesn't actually look like they're going to go ahead and try and engage onto Renekton. Probably not uh, not the worst idea there. Side note, shouts to Flappy Bearfish for both a fail flash that wasn't necessary. <laughs> Flashing into the wall, it didn't do anything for him, but it was pretty funny, and uh, I'll, I'll give him credit for that. Still, that's another kill picked up on Nasus. That's the potential of someone like Lucian at this point in the game. You can just go ahead, show up, and if, if you don't have a escape mechanism like Rift Walk, uh, like Rocket Jump, and even Rocket Jump can be stopped with a kick, then he's just going to kill you. You're just going to show up, you're going to be slowed, you need a great way to disengage or TC him. If you don't have that, he will catch up and he will stay on you, and you will either kill him or he'll kill you. Unfortunately, this kill also means that Flappy Bearfish is going to go ahead and manage to take down that tier 1 turret in the bot lane. In top lane, however, it actually looks like Aware Gaming may also be able to do the same here, but they're still having issues dealing with this Irelia, even in a 2v1 situation. So what this means is that Denial has managed to get the first turret of the game right now and looking at a situation where, I mean, they're just, oh my goodness, that ultimate coming out from Orianna, Nami just barely getting away from that. Uh, anyways, establish map control on the part of Denial, so good good job on their part. Oh, it's done going on to fakes and Inox is looking for this kill, just now applying some more pressure. That top turret has 60 HP, they're barely keeping it alive, but that, well, that's what they're doing, they're keeping it alive. And by delaying that gold, it just holds back the rest of the team. Every time they recalled, and they all just recalled a moment ago, uh, they, they could not buy anything with that extra 150. Oh, that sends on a scoop of Chris though. Yeah, we have the engagement up here, the box going out, and there we go, there are the double flashes heading out as well, the dragon kick coming out from Lee, and the exhaust is down, and they will go ahead and retreat behind the turret without any kills being taken on either side. Hopefully with this, they can finally secure that top tower. The problem is, back in the mid lane, back in the bot lane, what's going on in bot lane, it's a farm fest, not too exciting, Floppy Bearfish is getting more and more gold. What's going on in the mid lane? The Hum is being pressured by two. Nobody Pooper is getting more farm. They finally pick up the top turret. It requires the committal of three people. They don't pick up kills. They don't. They got something that they should have gotten a while ago, and they're still behind by almost 3,000 gold. Exactly. It's looking really rough for them right now, more so than anything because Denial is looking to go ahead and pick up their second dragon of the match so far. This extra gold coupled with the fact that they got that early tower is going to be devastating for them if Aware Gaming doesn't try and do something to combat this. Cloud9 Scout's going on here. Shouldn't trying to pressure though. He can do something. However, Scuba Chris has shown up the slice and dice on the best escape mechanism and there just aren't enough bodies here from Aware Gaming. <laughs> As Death Sentence, it was close, but it wasn't quite there. Oh, he tried, he tried so hard, but nah, Scuba Chris managed to pick up that dragon. So we're looking at a situation where this gold gap is just slowly and slowly increasing. It's one to three right now, one tower to one tower, but all that gold is in favor of Denial right now as they uh, managed to establish quite the lead for themselves. Yamba, doing some DPS, trying to do something. And yeah, that's it's some cool play. It's actually a very Cloud9 style of play. Cloud9 is something you like to do is if they're ahead, they pick up a bunch of dragons, because dragons are like free gold, you factor the turrets, it just builds up momentum so much faster. And they get the early kill, they get the early dragon, and they're just going to be at dragon every single time it spawns like clockwork. And if they can maintain that, 
you know, this, this tower will fall bot lane. It's essentially a, a 2 for one tower advantage now for Aware Gaming when they pick this up, but the, even then they're still so far behind, partially due to CS, but a lot of it is 2,000 gold from those dragons, just benefiting a denial. Exactly. So with that 3,000 gold lead right now, unfortunately, though, they did lose that bot lane turret. They lost that tier one tower down there. That is just not something that's coming back for them right now. Unfortunately, Flappy was not able to defend that and just decided to go ahead and get that blue buff instead. So that is going to help out the part of Aware Gaming just a little bit, helping to keep this into the game, uh, keep them into the game rather, and of course, giving them a chance to come back. But it looks like, there we go, Scoop of Chris has managed to find Nasus at his blue buff. We've got Renekton coming in, and oh, the Spear of Fire coming out and actually managing to take it. Aurelia is in here and is going to go ahead and get that stun down onto the Crocodile. And now Nubby Pooh Bear in a lot of trouble as he goes, and he gets, he's going to get Wither, that ultimate coming out. Oriana coming in and is going to go ahead and... Oh, unfortunately, Zyra getting picked off by Renekton, but Oriana continuing the pursuit here up in the top lane. Everybody really low on the part of the blue team, and there we go. There's the Thresh Lantern coming out, trying to get that little bit of extra defensive power as the chase continues for Aurelia, but it looks like they're eventually just going to call it off instead of pursuing. It really has quite a high base move speed. It's unable to keep up with her. I mean, that, that was once again... Okay, so right now, Denial, they just cannot go into this, this blue buff area. Every time they do that, people go down. You know, the blue buff is nice. Just give it up, though. At the same time, that was... That, those were really slick pickoffs for Aware Gaming. Fluffy Bearfish does get time to farm, but what did they do? They're able to catch... Um, the Pooh Bear at the very, very edge of that Oriana ultimate. A great flash over the wall from RxD slash uh, secure the death sentence kill. That's just really kind of what gave them that control, just very cool plays. thing is, the cool plays don't really make up for their lack of map control, for their lack of farm control. That's, I think, the big thing right now. Just look at Bobby Bearfish. 134 CS, most CS in the game, has one kill. Does he have the most gold in the game? Yes, those kills aren't quite enough. And uh, An overfed Tristan on Tristan with just much more gold than anybody else in the game, that can win the games almost on its own. Yeah, the fact that Tristana has got such an advantage before, you know, even hitting that real heavy team fight phase is absolutely terrifying. Just Tristana is a late game terror on her own. She's got that hyper carry status. To see her getting farther and farther and farther ahead in this in this early uh, to mid game is just it's it's going to be quite scary. I mean, we're seeing right now Denial is just looking at trying to pick off some towers right now. They've got this mid lane at tier 1 turret down fairly low. But I'm really excited to see how these next couple of just all-in 5v5s are going to go. I, I guess the question is going to be, all right, you're aware of gaming. Denial, you know, they've got some map control. Clearly, they just want to kill Dragon and Blue Buff. And Blue Buff ain't going too well. Dragon, pretty solid so far. You're aware of gaming. What do you do now? They can try and push down mid, but they have to be very aware. Um, Zyra is a really good anti-push character, because if people group up to kill a tower, that sets up the ultimate, that sets up the, the grasping vines, that sets up a lot of death for your team. They try and go for pickoffs, that's actually something their team is good for, but Tristana has the disengage, which is all to the jungle, same thing for Lee Sin, and if fighting in tight quarters, who does that benefit? Zyra. Zyra has two positions that she's really good in fighting in, and she's also a threat. She has a lot of farm, a lot of AP, so what do they do now? Uh, it looks like uh, what's going to happen now is we're going to have a team fight. We saw the Orion ult come out, and there we go. Lee Sin is going to go ahead and get picked up, and Nubby Pooh Bear in a lot of trouble right now. Graves will manage to pick up that kill in that dive behind the tower, and the flash coming out from E Honda, but it may not be enough. Aurelia trying to come in here. There we go. There's a flash of Blade of the Rune King active, and that will be a very, very dead Oriana. All right, so Zyra's great at fighting under a turret. Uh, what did they do on Aware? Until they, she dies. Well, they fight under the turret, and they're just like, alright, she ult, let's just walk out of it. They, she didn't land enough findings, and it's too much damage, too much dive, actually, forcing Bucky Darkish out fast. That uh, turret's gonna go down, though. Great. Essentially, it was a cool dive combination. Uh, Fakeson got his damage off, uh, Ihamba got his damage off, and that set of Purishin and Ghostier just do their thing. And they were able to, you know, get out of the Zyra ultimate, get to the back line, take out Floppy Bearfish, not kill him, just take him out of the fight. And Nubby Pooh Bear just got run over. Like, a train just knocked him out of the world. Exactly. Now, these exchanges are actually really beneficial for Aware Gaming right now. They're slowly starting to stack up this tower advantage right now. And this could be really scary for Denial because they're slowly going to be encroaching in on their jungle. They're going to have that map control. So they're going to have a greater presence at those objectives like Baron, like Dragon, that are going to be so detrimental to this game that Denial has really been using not really as a crutch, but as a great advantage to go ahead and continue uh, snowballing well throughout this first 20 minutes. That, that, that's, that play from Aware, they take out a turret, 
if they can keep that up, if they can keep going for these team fights where they're still getting, you know, enough damage from Graves to force Lobby Bear Fish out, if enough damage to just kill Nubby Pooh Bear. Nubby Pooh Bear is slow without escapes, and oh god, their their pink ward doesn't spot that ward. They're they're I sitting know, this on. This is so sketchy right now. It's a trap. They're just sitting in that trap, but they will survive. They will get out of there. Unfortunately, Nubby Pooh Bear, I, I believe his ultimate just came up came up a second ago. I just they, they were waiting for it. We're actually going to have the blue buff over here get taken by Scuba Chris. And now we may see the potential engagement coming out. Uh, we saw the Nami ultimate go down, followed by the Death Sentence landing onto her and the Zyra ultimate going down. That is going to be a very dead fish as Aurelia manages to pick off Thrush. Nass is falling soon after that Zyra. Just coming in with so much damage at this point. Oriana unfortunately getting caught out in that snare and she is going to end up falling. Uh, and there we go, another kill for Scuba Chris going down, and they may actually look to take Dragon here as well in what was a three-for-one exchange in the favor of Denial. All right, so if you kill Nubby Pooh Bear, if you take out Nubby Bearfish, if you you know get important characters in a fight, you'll win the fight. But who did all the early DPS hit? All with a Glee Glarbu, and you know a Nami who gets her stun off, a Nami with her ultimate down, she's not providing a lot in the fight. She's a low impact character at that point, and just too much got used on the squishy support. Like, I love Nami, but you know what? If you have the choice of, alright, Nami without spells up dying, or the, the AP Zyra mid, probably want the AP Zyra mid to go down first. That's just, it, just, it was bad targeting in the end. Exactly. You know, it's not always a problem that, that they were going to focus her, but using the Oriana ult specifically on her to go ahead and isolate her solely out of the fight was probably one of the worst things that could have happened during that engagement. They just didn't have the crowd control on anybody else that they needed to set up the AoE comp the way that it's intended to be run, and they just unfortunately came out on the losing end of that fight. We saw another dragon, the third dragon of the match, go ahead and go over to Denial, and you can see this 6,000 plus gold lead they've got on them right now. Three towers to two, but that is slowly, slowly beginning to change as Denial is going to start taking uh, taking more of an advantage after these pre after they press these fights. It's a 5.6k gold lead. That is... That's a, that's a lot of gold right there. That's an infinity edge. The difference between the two teams. Of course it's spread out. And where is that gold going? What is it becoming? Well, Aurelia has Blade of the Rune King. Looking for that Randuin. It will be solid. It'll help stop a lot of Hiroshin's damage. It'll help stop Ghost Zero getting to a fight. I think a lot, a lot of their gameplay right now is just going to be, be about keeping Hiroshin and Ghost Zero out of a fight. Um, so that, that random is going to be very solid for that, as well as the Blade of the Rune King. Nubby's almost got his death cap. Actually, can he afford it right now? No. Barely got the Blasphemy uh, Wand, but still close. And finally, Floppy Bearfish has Infinity Edge. He has 592 gold stacked up. Almost uh, has a Phantom Dancer, about 800 missing. And that, that's going to be, I think, the big turning point where Lobby Bearfish, it's not just, before it was if he dies early in a fight, they'll probably do really well. Now it's if he doesn't die early in a fight, they will lose the fight or Von Aware Gaming. Because Tristana is just reaching that Tristana point. He's got max rank, uh, oh, actually almost max rank rapid fire, level 4 at this point, max rank explosive shot, and he's just getting, getting to the point of death. You, if you don't kill Tristana early, you're going to lose the fight. Absolutely, we can see the fact that Denial has gone ahead and they've taken another tower right now, so they're just about even, uh, in well they are even rather, in terms of aware gaming uh, with these tower kills right now. We may actually see a skirmish break out near this barren pit right now. Or not, I'm going to eat my words again. Yeah, it's okay, the barren, it, it's a good threat, but they, they don't have any vision wards, they can't clear out any coverage, and if you look at the coverage, there's quite a bit, a big push coming out there from more gaming, Nami's in a great position though, they don't have vision, this is going to be a, a sickle. Yeah, here we go, the Nami engage going down, but the Oriana Ori ultimate managing to catch out just so many people, a nice job on the part of Ihana, and there we go, there is the ultimate coming out from Zyra, Tristana immediately going to be able to help get that kill on Nasus Renekton, picking off Lee Sin, and now it looks like a Ware's just trying to get out of there. A huge chunk of damage going down on a Flappy Bearfish. And there we go. There's a stun coming out from Nami. It is not going to be able to do anything as she gets taken out. And now it looks like Zyra is managing to take down Renekton. But only... Oh, oh no. Uh, poor Flappy Bearfish is going to go ahead and have that Blade of the Rune King go down under tower. And there we go. Zyra will quickly fall here. And Aurelia shortly after. And what is going to be a triple kill for Graves. It's going to go ahead and take that home. And Zyra passive not picking up anybody. Unfortunate, but this is, these are really cool fights. I mean, Graves is able to essentially carry the fight. Now it's 10-9. They, they won a fight while significantly behind, initiated on by the enemy team. 
All that was that Leonard was ultimate. I said it was gonna be sick. I'm sorry. It only hit one person, and I believe it was only it was only RxZ slash. At the same time, E Honda had such a cool response. I don't I don't believe he had vision, but the second he saw the ultimate come out, tossed out the ball, got ready for the ultimate, and then he just caught so many people when it came out. And it was like this essentially this line of scrimmage right here in between these two trees where both teams had to pass through it. There was Oriana on one side, Zyra on the other side, lots of just annoying things coming out. But Zyra's ultimate didn't get the DPS it needed to. Tristana took a bit too much damage from collateral damage in some of the Renekton dive and just it chunked them down. He hummed a great job actually in the chasing part of that fight where Denial chased out aware. He got so much damage onto uh, uh, Tristana. Like Fluffy Bearfish just kept getting poked down by the ball. Yeah, exactly. He didn't really have any chance to get in there and do what he wanted to kind of bounce around in those fights after being taken down so low. I was really surprised when Graves went in under that tower, that Blade of the Ruin King and Buckshot combo, just absolutely amazing. And it looks like Aware Gaming may be trying to uh, set up some kind of bait here over at Baron, though I think they're just going to go ahead and forego this to try and catch them out. And there we go. Scuba Chris does manage to catch them out, but he is going to get hooked by that Death Sentence, the Nami Ultimate coming out. And now Thresh is all alone after he connected himself there, and he is is going to end up falling the stun landing down onto Nasus, but it doesn't look like they're going to continue to pursue this. All right, that was a sick Nami ult. We'll go with that one, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, looking at this right now, just denial they finally get the sick Nami ult. They're finally moving towards this. This is just now they just got a pressure. They don't have RxZ slash RxZ slash, not a huge impact in the fights, but at the same time, this does mean that Flappy Burrowfish were the big threats to them. We're neck and dive jump back, walk back. Nasus Wither, does he have to cleanse up? No, he has barrier, plus he can just be out of range of it, honestly, and he can wait it out because of his range. So there's nothing to really dive him, and no rely or no skill shot that could possibly pull him forward. That would be a really good time to pressure. At the same time, Arc D Slash just doesn't do that much, and I guess they're just being more cautious. It does look like we had some fail wards go down. Everybody on the part of Denial just kind of backing off. They're going to go ahead and push out these waves and essentially prepare for the next team fight. But it actually looks like Aware Gaming may be able to finally get their first dragon of this match. This is going to be really important for them. They still need to work on closing that gold gap, despite the fact that they're coming back in kills and power as well in these team fights are just executed so much better. They still need to close this gold gap so they can continue to be on par with items. I, I, I want to see how these team fights match up. Like the pickoffs definitely go either way. So whoever's out of position, they can take them out easily. Lee Sin's hard to get out of position, which is why that last fight went so poorly. Also, I think RxZ Slash was able to get hit by Nami's ultimate, but not get interrupted in his uh, death sentence pool. So the question I have now is, when it comes to those team fights, when it comes to just five on five action, who wins? And you know, with the same cold lead from before and a, a bigger item gap, it was still aware in one of the fights. At the same time, they'd already lost another fight with a smaller gold gap. So I, I, I have to ask, like, what's going to be the big factor? What's going to push one team farther ahead? I, I think it's going to come down almost entirely to good Oriana ultimates, and if Floppy Bearfish can just dodge that DPS. But I, like, the, the teams have surprised me. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know who's confident now. Yeah, and it looks like we may have uh, something break out very shortly here in the mid lane. And you're absolutely right. These Orion alts have been very devastating. Every time they've managed to hit on more than, you know, two people, we've seen these fights go absolutely in the favor of Aware, especially uh, when Nami went ahead and used her own ulti outside of that bush. We saw just how well it went for them, and it's really helped to keep them in the game. So everything is pretty much resting on Ihonda's shoulders right now question is, is are they going to be able to really pull out a win from that alone? Wards galore though, check out one pink ward going to take out two wards total. Lots of gold going towards the enemy team. Another pink ward is clearing out here. Both teams fighting for the vision now. And this is, this is interesting actually because if you think about it, the team that's had better vision has actually been the team to lose in these fights. Um, last night was Nami Ultimate, or two fights ago was the Nami Ultimate that didn't do a lot, and then afterwards now lost the chase. And then last fight, it was RxZ Slash just gloriously flying to his own demise, but that's because he initi initiated on Scuba Chris without really knowing what could follow up. So they're both playing for a vision game, but it might even just be the counter-initiation at this point. 
Like, it's not so much who gets the better pickoff, it's who sets the better trap. Speaking but this is gonna look good! Zyra is gonna get picked off here. We got the ultimate coming up, but it's not gonna be enough. Lots of damage coming out from Irelia right now, and there's the Orion ultimate, but it doesn't look like they're actually going to continue this pursuit right now, as they've all gotten down very low. Arc Z Slash is in a world of hurt right now, and is going to be forced to back off as the rest of the red team continues to press down this middle lane. There is a Renekton back in base, RxZ Slash, gonna find a safer place to go ahead and recall. Like, that, that's a great pickoff, but at the same time, you know, Nubby Pooh Bear is dead, lots of ultimates were blown, can they safely do something? Not necessarily. Too much damage taken by the team. Flabby Bearfish still alive, still a huge threat. And it's, it's, it's this weird balance where both teams are very aware of what can go wrong in a fight. And both teams are playing different styles of gameplay that you normally expect with their comps. You know, going for pickoffs, hiding in this bush a second time. And the problem is, you know, they might get a kill, but I don't think, if it's not Tristana, if it's not possibly really, I don't think anything's going to come from it. It's unfortunate, but it's true, but it actually looks like Aware is going to go ahead and try and go for this Baron. They've been caught out from a ward, but they may know they're going to disengage from the Baron. Probably not a bad move here, as unfortunately Baron is kind of tearing through their health right now, and uh, not everybody is grouped up well enough around that to really take that objective. But that fight in general, you know, they managed to burn Renekton's Flash and a couple ultimates, but all of those are coming back up right now. But Nubby Pooh Bear, ultimate down, ignite down. Down. We saw the ultimate go down uh, as well as the flash because, yeah. Um, anyways, point being, he's just down and out a lot of summoner spells right now. This could really impact the next fight in terms of his repositioning. So they're going to have to be really careful in order to keep Nubby Pooh Bear safe as well as Flappy Bearfish who really need that ultimate peel from them and not to get caught out in that Oriana ultimate. I, I actually have to wonder if they expect Nubby Pooh Bear to die. Like, he hasn't built his own. He went for Leandri's uh, death cap. Leandri's is great on uh, Zyra because every plant auto attack will apply the passive. It's really good sustained DPS. And Zyra is someone who, oddly enough, she can die. She can die in a fight as long as she gets her spells off and the plant DPS, you know, it, it's gonna still keep ticking it. It's gonna be huge. So even though you'd rather have her you know, survive, like most players would, they don't need her to. And if they just, they can use her as bait. They can dangle a Nubby Pooh Bear in front of uh, Hirishin, in front of Arc Z Slash, in front of Ghost Zero. And if he gets his spells off and cause them to get out of position, you know, that, that's enough to win a fight. Exactly, and with the vision that Aware does have right now, they know exactly what's going on around this Baron buff, and it looks like Denial may actually be looking to go for a bait here. No, they're just going to go for the safe clear and back off at this point and get ready for the next team fight that's going to be coming up. So, uh, I don't know, this game is so back and forth right now, it's getting really evened up. We've seen this gold gap closing very steadily over around the last 10 minutes. The map control is even for both teams at this point, and nobody's terribly fed on either side with the exception of Graves, who has the majority of the kills for wear. Looking at that gold, it has a whopping 11,000 gold versus Tristana's 10,000, still very close at this point in the game. Uh, what does he have? Finish him. Fit in the edge. Blade of the Ruined King. So his damage is tremendous. His spells are, you know, normal, normal what Graves is known for. His buckshot is dealing quite a bit of damage, but, you know, those auto attacks are going to hurt. 260 AD. Graves has one of the higher base ADs in the game for an AD carry because of his lower range. And, well, it's a shotgun. Should be good. And it's, it's going to be hard for them to deal with that damage, but if they can kill him, or if Flappy Bearfish can peck him, peck him from max range, he is level 15, has about 650 range at this point. Graves is, is both a liability for his range, but his base stats that are better to make up for that are also tremendous, and look at this Baron, it's going to go down so fast. Yeah, it's going to go down over the wall too, which is really interesting. Uh, tristana has got that range now, she can go ahead and do it, and Zyra, of course, breaking out those plants is not going to be a problem, and it looks like Denial may actually get this uncontested not showing themselves anywhere near where they knew the ward coverage was thanks to that oracles coming out from nami an excellent play on the part of denial though oh my goodness a damage coming out from oriana is just absolutely devastating even to irelia and oh man, this baron I, is something going to happen with it like both teams are so scared of each other it's been 11 10 for quite a while now there has been a team fight in like 20 minutes in response you know they lost the baron let's pick up the dragon now and I guess the question really is, so cool, you know, one team got a bear and the other team got a dragon response, but clearly Denial is in a better position now, are they just going to wait it out? Which team has a stronger late game? If Oriana can stay alive, she can do really high sustained DPS, and chances are Zyra's just going to die. 
No offense to Zara, she, that's kind of how she ends up playing as an AP mid, but she'll still, still deal that damage. So it's like, probably a Barracus will outskill Graves, will Oriana outskill Zyra, will the scaling even matter for the AP carries if the ADs are ahead? I, I just, what do the teams want to do? It's hard to point it out for us, and I think they're having their own trouble deciding as well. I think both teams are looking for a passive game because they want to win it late, and, well, frankly, both teams have a lot of possibilities going on in the late game. Yeah, I'm really scared to see what's going to happen if this game drags on for another 10 minutes, especially between this Nasus and this Oriana. That's really terrifying right now. Nasus is just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. The game goes on. The more farm he gets on that Q, the worse he's going to be to deal with. He's not only going to have that tankiness, but he's going to have that damage coming out, even on somebody like Flappy Bearfish, who is going to go ahead and have that reposition. He can immediately just switch to Zyra or Nami or really anybody else on that team that he wants, smack them upside the head and take out a death devastatingly large amount of health. What? Will they ever actually get in that fight to get that, those large amounts of health off? Like, everybody's been at 100 HP for way too long, at least for my case, or for my taste. Now, they're pushing down mid. They're making the play. Aware Gaming, though, they're aware that there's a Baron buff on the enemy team, and they will immediately back off once they get past that river line. This river right here, this is where teams don't go past it. Why? Because it's terrifying. This is where scary. This is like scary place for war gaming. That's danger. But it looks like the Nile moving for a play. Don't land a, a resonating strike, and they could be just oh, trying to. Oh, here we go over the wall. There is the Oriana orb coming out, but it's going to be cut short. Nobody wanting to follow up on that as it didn't hit anybody for damage. Oh, I was so excited. I was like, yes, we're gonna see a play here. But then no, just no. You know, Nubby Pooper is still like he he's building himself to die, and I love it just because it works on Zyra. Like, still not going for the zone. He's gonna go for the Merle and Namacon, or possibly, uh, no, Athenes, I mean. And this is their chance for a fight. Oh, and there we go. There's the death sentence coming out. Nami immediately going to get Bursic. Graves picking up that kill, and now Thresh putting down that box. He's gonna go ahead and use that locket to try and deaden some damage. Aurelia forced to flash out, and now Graves flashing as well. Tristana has that wither on her, but oh, Oriana getting caught out here. She's gonna get down really low. That Zani is coming out, but it will not be enough to save her as Flappy Bearfish manages to pick up that kill, and now the jumps go on as a double kill comes out. Will we see the triple? There is the triple kill, and the next jump coming out, and there's the it's the Penta! The oh my god, Flappy Bearfish breaking out that Penta, showing off that Baron buff right now, and really getting that uh, carry potential for his team. Flappy Bearfish playing the Jaguar in the jungle, just hiding back, waiting to get those pokes off the entire fight. He just sat back, like, I'm gonna hit Graves. He hits Graves. He gets one, and he just sat back, got completely ignored by the members of Aware Gaming. What's that lead to? It leads to a Penta, it leads to kills, it leads to something finally happening in this game. The Nexus turret's going down, and that's it! That was Flappy Bearfish biding his time, playing that late game Tristana, going from 2-1-5 to 7-1-5 in about 15 seconds. Uh, Flappy Bear for VP completely put all of Denial on his back in that last fight. An excellent play on the part of both teams. Was really close up until that last fight where everything that could have gone wrong for Aware Gaming went wrong.